today we are going to be talking about another very interesting thing and that is shatter inside of maya now usually when we break apart a certain thing like for example if i take a simple sphere the usual method of breaking a polygon into different pieces is if you go into the edges here select all the edges and uh, i think it's called uh, deattach and from here if i take a single polygon here and if I move it as you can see we have deattached or separated our polygon faces but again this does not solve the problem of creating an actual chunks of any polygon or a destruction polygon so what you want to do is create a solid state of it like it was something like this and shatter allows us to do something like this so this is what we are going to be talking about today so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take a simple sphere and let's scale this up and uh, I'm going to go into the FX menu and if you go to the effect you'll find shatter. So go into the settings here and in the shatter you'll have three type of different shatters. You have the surface shatter, the solid shatter and the crack. Now the surface only creates a hull shatter that means it will be completely inside uh, empty on the inside on the other hand solid creates a solid chunk which we talked about right now and the crack will create a crack kind of thing but the crack does requires an open polygon like for example it's simple disk or maybe a plane on the other hand surface and solid shatter works on closed polygon as well simple as like a sphere so we'll talk about all three of these let's go into the surface shatter so there is a extrusion here the first thing is the shard count how much uh, in how many pieces you want to break apart your polygon now here the 5 is too low for me I'm gonna make it something like maybe a 15 and then you have the extrusion um, If you want to extrude your shard on with with some depth, which we'll see in a minute And then we have the seed value seed basically changes the overall pattern of your shatter like for example if it's uh, Creating cracks from here here. It can change. Let me just take this if it's creating a pattern like something like this and if you change the seed to something else, what it will do is it will try to create a different kinds of pattern. So seed is nothing but a random pattern generating thing. So I'm going to keep it to zero for now. And then you have the post operation, which is the overall creating the shape and then a rigid body with collision. We don't usually apply the soft or rigid body because it totally depends what we are going to be doing afterwards because we can either go for end cloth or maybe we can go for bullet or maybe the native RBD. It totally depends on us. So it's better to keep it as shape. Now then you have the triangulate surface when it creates a shatter piece it will create a triangulated surface just so it will have more surface detail and then it will create a smooth shard or like for example if we go into the hard shade this is what it shows but after the overall um, destruction the overall surface shatter it will create something it will try to create a smooth surface again then the original surface so what happens afterward uh, the shatter has created its effect after it's uh, it has cracked the whole thing so then you'll have, you'll have couple of options either you can do nothing that means it will keep as it is you can hide your main object or you can delete your main object that means if i create a shatter of this it will create a shatter a group of shatter or a group of polygon and it will delete and get rid of this original sphere either you can hide it or you can do nothing with it all right i usually hide it uh, that's just my workflow but it totally depends on you what you want to go with and i'm going to click on apply as soon as you click on apply you'll see a couple of things happening and uh, one thing you'll notice that nothing happens with this and one thing to keep in mind when you're working with shatter always freeze your transform and delete its history now with the history as you can see we have changed some few things here and with the freeze transform with the transform we have changed some parameters so if i go to my edit here delete by type and history i'm going to get rid of the, all the history here and with the translate here you can simply go to modify and freeze transform if you're working under the polygon modeling menu you can simply click on these hotkeys as well this is simply for the deleting the history this is for the freeze transform so you don't have to go back to the whole menu thing again i'm going to click on the apply again and now here you can see we have created a shadow so the early on it wasn't working because we had all the translate value and the history still on our object so that's why it was not working so always keep in mind if your shatter is not working try deleting the history try freezing the transform 
Alright, so the next thing, uh, one more thing you'll notice since we have uh, kept the original surface to height, we can we still have our original sphere here, but it is hidden. So uh, the next thing that we have is our polygon here. Now you'll notice it has created different type of chunks, which is pretty amazing, pretty nicely cut and everything. So here you can break apart. So this is uh, the overall effect of surface shatter. As you can see, the object is completely hull on the inside. Uh, if you want, you can take a two-sided lighting if you want to see a little better. And uh, the other thing that you can do, I'm going to undo this. Alright, so one more thing I want to do is I'm going to go here to the effect shadow. And I'm going to take some extrusion uh, depth here with extrude chart. I'm going to make this 5 and I'm going to let's change some seed value just so we have different uh, variation. And I'm going to click on apply. Alright, so there you go. Now with the extrusion, the 5 value was too big, but here you'll notice that we get this kind of depth going on with the extrusion. I'm going to undo this because the extrusion depth is a bit too much. Uh, let's go to effect, shatter, and let's go for something like 0.2. And I'm going to hit apply. Let's close this. And now if we see this, we have nice extrusion going on here. I think this amount of extrusion is pretty good. It's totally up to you if you want to keep it hollow on the inside or if you want to have some kind of depth, then you can do this as well. All right, so let's get rid of this. Let's take another sphere, bring this up and let's delete history, freeze transform. And I'm gonna go to the effect shatter and let's check out the solid shatter. Now I'm gonna keep, uh, I'm gonna reset this whole thing. We have the shard count to 5, which is too less again for me. I'm going to make it 25 a bit more than usual. And then you have edge jagginess, which is basically the overall uh, rigidness. Or you can see how curved or sharp the overall. For example, let me just take this pencil here. If your edge is something like this, increasing the value, it will create more jagginess here. And uh, the more jagginess you have, it will look more like a shard pieces what kind of look you're going for if you want less you can keep it to zero and then again i'm gonna keep everything as it is and i'm gonna hide my original surface and i'm gonna hit apply uh, so you have to select the, uh, the polygon and hit apply and then it will do his magic it's calculating the whole polygon and there we go so i'm gonna close this and if we select this let's go to object mode so there you go so now you have all these chunks these amazing looking shard pieces which is completely closed in here so we have nice so this is pretty amazing uh, you can do a lot of thing after this which we are going to be seeing in the next video where we are going to be combining this with our bullet solver uh, bullet and everything physics engine and uh, this creates a pretty amazing effect if you want you can go back here and you can change the overall color of your shard to something like maybe a red or something totally depends on you and uh, maybe create a transparency depth here or something like this so this is pretty amazing uh, it totally depends on what kind of thing you're working on if you want to create a solid state or a simple surface shatter so then last thing as i said uh, the last thing that we have here is the crack shatter and as i said it requires a open polygon so if i take something like this a simple plane and I'm going to quickly increase some polygons here, maybe like 30 and 30, just so we have nice subdivision. And delete history, freeze transform. And I'm going to select a vertex. Now this uh, particular shatter requires a single point to be selected for it to work. So I'm going to go back to effect shatter, crack shatter, and uh, let's reset this. So crack count has been set to 5. I'm going to make it to 10 and then crack length, how far it's going to go on each direction, edge jagginess as we discussed. And then if you want to create some extrusion, this, this is the same extrusion that we had for the extrude shard on the surface shadow that we just saw. And again, the seed value and all, all the other settings are the same. So I'm going to hide this and apply. And as you, as you're seeing here right now, it's basically creating some cracks on the surface. So it will take a little time depending upon how much crack count you have on your overall parameters. But here you can see a nice animation of the whole thing. So if I go back here, you'll notice mm, this is my original. All right, I, I think I did nothing with that. And uh, I'm gonna 
I think I'm gonna go back here. I think we forgot to hide it. And I'm gonna undo this. Yeah, there we go. Plane here. Let me just freeze this again. Effect shatter and uh, let's keep it to 8. And I'm gonna add some depth here with this. Alright, so let's select something like this. Again, 8. Jagness to be like 0.2 and extrusion to 0.1. I think that should be good enough. Let's delete the original surface and hit apply. It will start to create some cracks here. And uh, you can see the nice little animation going on here. Alright, I'm gonna close this and here you'll notice that we have something like this and we have our extrusion depth as well. So I'm gonna lower this down, I'm gonna bring this up, bring this down just to create some variation. And uh, we have nice cracks and everything. Uh, you can't see the overall cracks. You cannot uh, select these type of polygon because they are still connected somewhere. Because the crack kind of uh, rotated here in some direction. That's why it's not exactly separated. So we have much more longer length. That's why we had this. But I think the overall uh, cracks here are pretty nice. And uh, it looks pretty good and amazing. And I'm going to quickly... yeah. So this is the overall crack pattern that you get. All you have to do is in this one you require a open polygon like for example a disk. Either you can take a disk or a plane totally depends on you. Then again you can take any vertex just select any vertex and then from that you can create your cracks. If you want to play more around I will highly suggest playing more with the edge jagginess and the crack length if you are working with crack shutter. With the solid, try to create more pieces and uh, play around with a jagginess again. So play around with all of these three things because this will be useful in the next video where we are going to be combining this with the bullet physics engine. So that's it for this one and I'll see you in the next video.